Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're just going to do a bit of a Q&A. We asked you for some questions. I'm going to tell you why we're actually doing that this week. We've had some changes in the shop that have taken a little bit longer than they should have done. We've actually refitted our shop. We've, we've turned our entire workshop area to one end of our shop and we ordered some lovely cabinets to go across the back of the wall and did new floor and new lights but unfortunately the cabinets that we originally ordered didn't materialize and it took us three months to actually get our money back and also then reorder some new cabinets which came super quick and the new company that we used were just amazing and they're now all set up we've got a few little finishing details to do but we'll soon be ready to refilm in that space the last couple of videos we've actually done have been sort of an amalgamation of the old unit in the new space and it's all been very very tricky for us the shop has looked like a bomb has gone off in it and we've tried to keep it as tidy as possible but it's been a real headache for us so that's why the videos haven't been so consistent and it's been a bit up and down on the channel in the last few weeks but it's all to improve the channel to improve our videos so hopefully that'll start to come to fruition very very soon and you'll start to see our new space but to this week just to give you some content and just to answer some of your questions we've got the questions here and I'm going to run through them with you what is your favorite bike that you've restored or repaired on the channel we did a rod brake rally bike and it was actually one we brought off of a local marketplace and I actually kept it I rode it home the day after we restored it just to see what it was like and I absolutely fell in love with it it was lovely I was nice and upright as I've mentioned in other Q&As, I broke my shoulder a couple of years ago and I've got a lot of trouble with that joint. So I've um, retired from racing bikes, but this upright bike, I felt nice and upright. It's almost like standing up when you're riding one of those old things. And I loved it, I kept it. So that is my favorite bike that I've repaired or restored and we've still got it. So that's the one. Is having a second winter bike a good idea? Absolutely but it depends on you as a rider and what you're doing. If you are a rider that rides and trains all through the winter, the chances are you've got a bike that has gradually deteriorated, you've replaced for racing and you've ended up with a second bike. If you're in that position, it's great to use that second bike either on the turbo trainer or out on your winter riding and keep your main bike for spring, summer, dry weather and it will keep that as nice as possible moving forward so i think it's always good to have a role in plan with bikes because they do wear out it's always good to have more than one bike what's your favorite bike build well one of our very early videos if you go back was a paul milnes where we upgraded it to di2 that was actually my own road bike and that actually has always been one of my favorite bikes i, I put a lot of care and attention into what i put onto that bike and it rode an absolute dream and that actually was the bike that I retired my racing career on. I, that was the last bike that I used. I always enjoyed that. It was by far my favorite bike and my favorite bike build. Have you seen any of the Shimano crank set problems being reported during your inspection process? Well, we do do the Shimano crank set inspection and we take them apart. So we take both the rings off. We clean up all the components and polish them all up and make sure they're absolutely spotless before we do that inspection. And yes, we have found cranks that have failed, but they're very, very minute. And I think that's the key with what's going on with these Shimano cranks is that the, the big failings you often see in photographs where they snap completely in half have usually been an escalating problem that someone's either ignored or just wasn't aware of. And that again is a good reason to have your servicing regime in place to be able to inspect components, be that your bike shop or yourself and you'll usually just see a little bit of the bonding starting to fail and that's all I've found so far is a couple or three with just a little bit of bonding failure and I've done a lot and there's not many that are coming back where they happen to go back under warranty but fair play to Shimano and fair play we're in the UK so fair play to our importer of the Shimano because they are on the money with this and, and there's been absolutely no problems with any of the claims I've made for me it's working out really really well so get your crank sets inspected if they're under that recall what do you think of these upcoming Chinese electronic group set and non-electronic group sets? I think the Chinese market is a, is a strange thing really because we all know that a lot of stuff comes from China, be that tooling or bikes or whatever it be. And some of them are really quite good, but the issue you have is when something goes wrong. Some of them are totally reliable until they go wrong. And then it's very hard to get a a part to do the repair so you can suddenly have life extinct on your component that is hardly done anything because you just can't get the parts to repair them with brands like shimano especially because that is the biggest one in the uk 
you can always get parts or you can always get alternatives and you can usually keep the bikes rolling for for decades with with those parts i personally wouldn't buy them on a bike if i was looking at them retail but that's entirely up to you and the risk you want to take really what advice would you give someone who is just starting a bike repair business well obviously i'm no business guru um but equally my number one or the number one thing you should do the day you decide to start your own bike repair business is protect your online identity first and foremost so once you've got your company name find a website that matches that name find a facebook find an instagram find an x find a youtube find a TikTok, whatever it be register those accounts along with your business name to protect it because there's always someone who may jump on to what you're doing to stop you getting a foothold so always number one the day you decide to start your own business protect your online identity what is your opinion on the development of very hard to service bikes due to the bike external design developments internal cables now even in handlebars and headset bearings making a simple stem change already labor intensive keep up the good work kind regards from the netherlands well to me it, it makes no difference it, whether i'm doing a technically difficult job or a very very easily external route in me as a mechanic the bike comes in and i deal with what's in front of me and the fact that customers in my shop already they're happy for me to do that so it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference to me i fill my day with whatever is in front of me at that time yes it's going to cost the customer more money but that's what they've subscribed to when they buy that bike usually the bikes that are like that are much higher end which means obviously there's a little bit more disposable income with with that customer so it doesn't probably even affect them either so it is what it is really and i think bikes do get technically more advanced and they are getting more tricky but that's the joy of the local bike shop that's why you should start using us you know don't worry about using us bring it in and we'll sort it out for you it's it's never a problem really for you or i so um uh, it doesn't really worry me that if you were a beginner cyclist what would be the first three things you would learn to fix and maintain on your bike i think number one is roadside puncture learn how to do that you can do it in your garden before you get out on your bike on the roadside but if you're miles away from home if you was a beginner cyclist what would be the first three things you would learn to fix and maintain your bike well number one is a puncture roadside puncture trail puncture you want to learn how to remove your tyre, remove your wheel, remove your tyre, get that inner tube out, get a new one in. Without a doubt, that's the number one. You're going to get punctures riding bikes, so learn how to fix those. Absolute number one. Number two, learn how to check your chain for stretch using the chain checker. You'll see that in most of our videos. We check the chain first. It's a great way of seeing the, the entire condition of the rest of the drivetrain on your bikes. Number three, simple thing, just learn how to oil that chain at the same time. It will make a world of difference to keeping everything lubricated and the biking tip top condition. So they're my three tips for a new rider. What are the best brand tools after park tools as I can't afford these sets? Well, the key with tools is to buy the best you can afford at the time. You can always upgrade them, but definitely with tools, quality is representative of price and the more quality you want in your tooling the more you're going to need to pay for it so unfortunately that is a trait of almost any tooling in any industry so you just have to buy the best to what you can afford and also if you're only maintaining one bike and you're only working on it once a month you don't need the quality of tools like someone who's in the industry repairing bikes all day long bike shop to sell accessories and parts or bike service fix and restore how to start up in this business well the key there is to allow your business to be fluid when we started our little bike shop we quickly learned that within our shop we couldn't sell bikes we haven't got a big unit which means we couldn't give a huge range so we had bikes in but they weren't selling so we sold those all off and we've given our workshop area so fix and restore in the case of this question we've given our entire shop over to a servicing shop it's the only thing that we focus on is service and repairs so we've got a much bigger workshop which you'll see in the next video that we do do and we've actually stopped selling new bikes we'll sell an odd bike here and there maybe a used bike if we can get one at the right price we'll sell that on but it's not our focus our focus now is service and repair so we have really evolved our shop and you as a as a new bike shop 
starting up a new business, have to look at your local market, have to try things and have to be prepared to be fluid within your business to change things as needed. So that would be my advice there. What tools would you recommend a relative newcomer to cycling should invest in? Allen keys, so you want a decent set of Allen keys and also a quarter inch drive socket set will never do any harm. So they would be the things I would suggest you buy as a new cyclist. You want to have metal cord plastic tire levers. Plastic tire levers on their own will often fail at the tips. Metal ones will often scratch wheels. So you want a steel cord plastic tire lever. Allen keys, quarter inch drive set and a decent set of tire levers. Do you reuse your microfiber towels? If so, how's the right way to get the grease off them? We don't reuse them, but we have a roll-in position within the workshop for them. So brand new microfiber towels are always used for the final polish and finish on a bike. That way we're never gonna scratch the frame or the paintwork, so we always use a new one for that. But once they've been used once, they then go to a wipe down rag, so they will then become greasy and oily, and then we use them a third stage, which is on the greasy and oily components to wipe off the residues and thickness that's originally on a part when it comes in. So they're used in a three stage and then we discard them. Do you offer mechanic courses? Well, no, we don't. Obviously as a business, you have to focus on your bottom line and you have to earn a living and you can spread yourself too thin and just be in all different directions. We are not a how-to channel. We do not show you how to do things on our channel. You can search on YouTube for how-to videos. There's plenty of them out there. We just like to give you a little bit of entertainment and a little bit of information along the way just to show you what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in our shop to show our customers what we do what level of service they're going to get when they bring a bike in what do you think about electronics on bikes any plans you would film a shop tour love your videos well electronics on bikes i think are fantastic they they just ride a joy if you've ever ridden a bike with electronic group set you would have enjoyed that experience and if you own one, you probably would always own one. They are cracking. As far as a shop tour, any plans for a shop tour? We actually have quite a small unit and you do see a big portion of it on the video. So uh, we may do that at some point, but uh, well, there's no plans for that at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little Q&A session there and appreciate that while we were doing a refit, things have been a little bit upside down. Do like, do subscribe, drop us a comment and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.